Hi Year 1 and 2, I'm really pleased I can read a story to you today. I'm going to read to you the next chapter of The Hodge Hegg by Dick King Smith, Chapter 3. Before we start though, I need to see if you are sitting beautifully and if you are listening. So let's have a quick game of Sutton Says to see if you're listening carefully. Remember, you only do the action if Sutton says it. Ready? Sutton Says, wiggle your fingers. Sutton Says, give me a thumbs up. Sutton says, hands on ears, hands on nose. <gasps> Did I catch you out? Let's try again. Sutton says, hands on heads. Sutton says, hands on shoulders. Sutton says, hands on heads. Sutton says, hands on shoulders, hands on heads. <gasps> oh, that's good listening. Right, let's have our story today. When we left Max, he had just discovered zebra crossings. Let's see what happens next. Chapter three. By now, it was quite late. The rush hour was over, the shops were shut, all was quiet. I'll wait, thought Max, and then, when a car or lorry comes along, I'll cross in front of it. Soon he saw something was coming. It was a lorry. It was, he was halfway across when he suddenly realised that the lorry hadn't slowed up at all and was almost on top of him, blinding him with its brilliant lights, deafening him with its thunderous roar. It was not going to stop. Lorries only stop for people, not hedgehogs. The lorry driver, who, until he was almost upon the crossing, had been quite unaware of the tiny pedestrian, did the only possible thing. With no time to brake or swerve, he steered as to straddle the little animal. Looking back in his wing mirror, he saw that it was continuing on its way unhurt. He grinned and drove off into the night. The sheer horror of this great monster passing above with its huge wheels on either side of him threw Max into a blind panic and he made for the end of the crossing as fast as his legs would carry him. He did not see the cyclist silently pedalling along close to the curb and the cyclist did not see him until the last moment. Feverishly, the man twisted the handlebars and the front wheel of the bicycle suddenly wrenched round, caught Max on the rump and catapulted him headfirst into the face of the curbstone. The next thing that Max recalled was crawling painfully under his own front gate. Somehow, he had managed to come back over the zebra crossing. He had known nothing of the concern of the cyclist who had dismounted peered what looked like a small dead hedgehog, sighed and pedalled sadly away. He remembered nothing of his journey home, wobbling dazedly along on the now deserted pavement, guided only by his sense of smell. All he knew was that he had an awful headache. The family had crowded round him on his return, all talking at once. Where have you been all this time? asked Ma. You're right, son, asked Pa. Did you cross the road? they both said. And Peony, Pansy and Petunia echoed, Did you? Did you? Did you? For a while, Max did not reply. His thoughts were muddled, and when he did speak, his words were muddled too. I got a head on the bump, he said slowly. The family looked at one another. Something bot me on the hittum, said Max, and then my head I headed my bang. My ache bad's headly. Did you cross the road? cried his sisters. Yes, said Max wearily. I hound where the foomans cross over, but... But the traffic only stops if you're a human, interrupted Pa. Yes, said Max, not if you're a hedgehog. So that's the end of chapter three and we'll see you again soon for chapter four. Thank you for sitting so beautifully and listening so well as well and I'll see you all soon. Bye!